I want to bring into the show now somebody who we absolutely love. He's a South African institution, this guy. He's an actor. He's a mime artist, a singer. He's an entertainer. He is well known to South Africans. His face is as familiar to us as some of our family members. He's been in the number one ladies detective agency, Hotel Rwanda. He was in famously Suburban Bliss on our TVs, Dubé on Monday. He's been in movies with Leon Schuster, Panic Mechanic, Millennium Menace. This year... He is in Cinderella, the pantomime, with Desmond as one of the hilarious ugly sisters. (laughs) Her name, (laughs) I I love you, man. Uh, What's the name of your character in the the pantomime? Fanny Flatulina. (laughs) Yeah, say say no more. I'm I'm, I'm just worried that you... You said I'm an institution, and and yes. it sounded like a compliment, but I, I can no, tell no. that it wasn't. Dude, it is. Um, I promise you, we, we have so much love for you. How are you, my my friend? I'm good, my brother. How are you doing, man? I'm extremely well. Desmond Dube, you are you're such a pro. You can do so many things. Like you're such a versatile guy. And in in South African entertainment, in order to just survive, many people need to be versatile, and some of them are approaching you in terms of their talent. But man, you don't just survive, you thrive. You are incredibly good at all the things you do. But I do worry. Whenever I see your face, I'm kind of a little bit concerned you're going to be selling funeral policies to me. So I just (laughs) keep reminding myself. For for only one rand a day. (laughs) Only one rand a day. Only one rent. Look, it, it 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 happens more often now than than ever. I think I've I've been with the brand for quite a while. Yes. So Try and often tell, when right? I see people being irresponsible or so, uh, it'll jump up. You know, my mm-hmm. first question would be, "Do you have insurance?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> because we don't want to be responsible. <laughs> we don't want to be responsible for all this, uh, Desmond. So listen, first of all, it's really good to see you again. Um, I'm sure you're hard at work on on rehearsals at the pantomime at the moment. Um, how has lockdown affected you, if, if at all? Because you are a busy man. You have lots of different streams of income. Um, I'm sure that it's, it's, it's been tough for you, though, too, and for everyone in your profession. Yeah. Look, I think first we need to be very grateful that we, at least we are alive, we breathe. You know, um, uh, whatever setbacks that came from lockdown itself, um, you can overcome if you're alive. <laughs> if, if you're gone, there's nothing else to do. So we all got affected, you know, uh, particularly uh, economically. Um, but I think, I think also, you know, I look at our kids and I think these kids are strong, man, because uh, I did go through some, some hard times. You know, I'm, I'm not used to being at home. Um, uh, uh, I'm always out there sort of trying to find the next thing or the next big thing. And, and just watching our kids, you know, locked in the house, they couldn't see their friends. And th- this was the way they see, you know, they get to see each other. And then they still just got up and went back to school and passed for that matter. You know, I, I think yeah. We, yeah. We, we take that for granted, you know. Well, I, I'm very glad to hear that, that your kids are good. And I think there are many people who's, who's you know, kids are so, they really are very strong. Hey, they're resilient. Like it's amazing how how kids, for them, uh, especially if they started school in the last two years, this is just normal. They're like, yeah, well, this is how school works. Yeah. So for them, yeah. for a lot of them, it's going to be like going back to what we see as normal. They're going to be, oh, okay, well, things have changed again. That's fine. They can just handle stuff a lot better than we can. So why Absolutely. why is it? We got into a huge debate this week, and I said, no, it's not. It's not your mom. But Mbulelo and uh, Libang the other day, they were both convinced that Lillian Dube was your mother because you do the yeah. ads together. Yeah. Is that you guys even related? <laughs> we, you know, uh, here's the thing I think that confos- confuses a lot of people. Um, I sort of, when I came into the industry, Mom Lillian, if you remember, Mom Lillian used to have an agency. Mm. Um, and I, I, I was often seen at the office. Um, uh, at her office and of, obviously I got to stay with her for a little while as well. So a lot of people sort of confuse me and her, uh, her biological son, Pule. You know, mm. even today when some people see Pule, they think that's me. So I, I, I 
I suspect that something is is up there. I'm not. I'm not sure. <laughs> We're waiting for the paternity tests. You see, see this is also, you didn't answer my question directly. You went into a story like people are confused, and then you don't help that situation because you say things in the press. You say things in the press like, "Yeah, Mum Lillian has been my my mother in the entertainment world." Blah blah. blah. People are like, I don't understand. Just say yes or no. So we let all me, can. No, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. It's not as straight as forward as, as <laughs> yes or no, Gareth. Just give me, give me a moment. It's in the morning. Um, I, we realize that often people will ask us when we're together. They'll ask us that question. You know, is this your son? And mm -hmm. one time I remember I said no. And... <laughs> Those people were just destroyed, <laughs> you know, their hearts were broken. And, and Mom Lillian was like, you see, there's no answer that's actually right, you know. So, um, <laughs> look, I've, my, my biological mother and Mom Lillian are really close friends. Um, okay. Uh, so that's the answer. All right. No, no, yeah. I love that. All right. Let's just talk about some of these amazing things that you've done in your life because you've got a hell of a, a CV. I mentioned uh, Hotel Rwanda. I mentioned uh, the, the Leon Schuster movies. I mentioned Number One Ladies Detective Agency. Uh, are you still in contact with any of the people in those productions? Do you still speak to them often? Do you, do you have anything to do with them? I mean, some of yeah, these have been often, often. international. Um, I, I chat to uh, Nick Nolte's son uh, often. Uh, Don mm. Chiddle is still a friend. He comes to South Africa quite often. Um, uh, Anika Noni Rose is a family friend now. So, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, some of those friendships happen. But here's the thing about the Americans is that you, we also, we almost have to sort of like step back a little bit and not, and not want to force those kind of relationships, you know. Mm. And if it comes from them, it's always, it's always better. Um, yeah, I, I see what you mean. You don't want to be like the annoying South African person who's like yeah. trying to inveigle your way in because they always yeah. think that you're, you're trying to uh, to get into Hollywood and make friends with their friends so you can get ahead. Yeah. But that's that's not what you want at all. No, I mean you you have you really are a, a believer in South Africa and you've you've put an enormous amount of energy and effort into the entertainment business in this country. You've probably helped along many actors that we don't even realize you were involved in. Um, but you'd re you believe in the entertainment business in this country, despite it having some very tough times recently. And despite it being a tough industry in general, uh, there are not a lot of actors in particular, or singers, or dancers, or musicians, or theater people, or anyone, who can crack a living out of just that. They often have to have a side job, have to have something else that they do the rest of the time. Uh, what's your advice for young people who are going into the entertainment business? You know, I think, um, Gareth, that's a very good question, actually, because I often speak to young people who are coming into the industry, including in the pantomime this year. We have a lot of young people who, who just uh, uh, came out of college. Mm. For me, I think we, we need to see it as, as a business to start off with. But mm. secondly, you know, uh, um, take off all the other rubbish, you know, take off all the other rubbish. Fame will always follow um, if your art is on point. Um, uh, we, we we see a lot of young people now who tend to go for the fame first, um, and 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 then you know they they then the art form does not does not match um, the the sort of fame they're carrying around you know and that's where all sorts of things start popping up arrogance. Um, celebrity dome and and so on you you know i've said this to you before that i i, I get very uncomfortable when people call me a celebrity and yes. I, and i always say I'm, I'm 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 because i'm very talented to be called a celebrity <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> you know um and 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 that's it you know look see it as a business and and i think once you see it as a business you you realize that that's your job. You you then have to do what you need to do to get it done. You know, uh, if it means watch seven hundred movies a week, you got to yes. do that. If it means attend ex some extra classes to watch how other people do it, uh, then that's what you need to do. You know, but well, ultimately the business is you. You've never, which I think is really remarkable. You know, some some actors and performers and entertainers. 
they they say no to things because they think they're too good for them. And what I've always loved about you is if a job comes along and you think it's either different and you can challenge yourself to do something you haven't done before, or if it's the kind of job that maybe is is just uh, something that that you can add to your your incredible CV full of of different stuff, you seem to take on things that other people wouldn't do. I mean, you know, George Meany, who's going to join us just now, he's from Auto Trader. He remembers those I'm a glug glug ads. There are people who, who loved Suburban Bliss, and there are a lot of people who hated Suburban Bliss. You're doing pantomimes, isidingos. You've done soap operas. Um, you do ads. It's an it's incredible this this variety of stuff. You you don't say no to stuff. You give it all a fair chance. Yeah, the real grit of our industry at the moment is something we call industrial theatre. Not many people know this. I mean, obviously, um, because we perform in you know four companies to you know to either educate uh, or infotain uh, staff members and so on. And and we've done things like going under you know into the mine. You know, uh, last weekend I was showing my wife some pictures with us. You know, underground, like literally underground. 800 meters underground, you know, working with the miners while, you know, while they, they, they're busy do, doing their thing. And that's the part of the grid. It's, it's, it's that um, uh, for me, the industry is also here for uh, uh, not only for the cash, but also to, to educate. And of course, uh, South African companies, a lot of them, including mines, decided that they they're going to do that and now i know you you know i take this from what you just said now i know a lot of people who would not dare go and do industrial theater right you want yeah, to go too, and perform in a canteen too, too good for it right yeah yeah they could they too good for it but but those are the people seeking for i i believe those are the people who are just looking for the fame and well, the exactly class. Zach yeah. Lesupi says uh desmond was brilliant on a netflix special how to ruin christmas so people people really do know all your stuff. Um, right. Uncle Potse says, I used to love Suburban Bliss. And then Jeremy has to be like the, the, the bad guy here. Desmond is a great performer. Pity about the annoying constant funeral adverts. <laughs> <laughs> well, people must stop dying then, Jeremy. Yeah, well, we, <laughs> like, if people stop dying, know, exactly. then we can Not stop doing the adverts. Trouble. Right, exactly. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. But also Jeremy doesn't know that at the moment um, – uh, we 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 are on every channel on television, so mm. he he might have to switch to a, a total different country, you know. <laughs> so, so I'm to um, <laughs> yeah, Desmond, I, I can see that jacket you've got. I don't know if you saw the Fiel and Balula one million jacket thing. I mean, you've always been on point with your style. So the jacket that he had, you seem like a man who would know where he got it. So forget about what he was saying. One million, what what. The jacket he had, you you are such a stylish dude. Do you know where he got that jacket? No, I don't. Okay. Just check it. Why would you okay, even I'm, think I'm, that? I, I, ask me everyone. I bought this from a flea market. <laughs> okay. Well, you make it look good. You make yeah, it look good. I, I thought I you might it from know. a flea market and then I just got my my own uh, logo onto it, you know, just okay. to make it look good. But very impressive. No, no, no. Talking about right. Fikilim Balula, I think it was so <laughs> it was so brave of all of you actually. Uh, the people who went to that roast, Gareth. I, why would you do that oh, to yeah. yourself, my dog? No, you know, I, I, you know what? Um, they prevailed upon me. They'd been asking me for three or four years before then. But I remember right. when I arrived. When I arrived there. Now you're a seasoned performer, so you probably have more patience than I do. And a lot of theatre and a lot of television is hurry up and wait, right? Yeah, it's very annoying. Everybody yeah. here knows that. Anybody who's ever been in the studio audience knows how much wasted time there is on these things. Right. So we were meant to start recording at, I think, 8 o'clock that evening. And it was in Gold Reef City. Right. And I arrived, I, we arrived at like 5 or 6 to, you know, make up and you have to do, do some rehearsals and some prep and all the rest of it. And I was kind of excited to do it because there's some really great people on that lineup and you know yeah, I saw yeah. I saw Skumba yesterday who is sure that guy's fantastic he's just uh, one Skumba of the is, Skumba is the king man mm, he really is no and, he's the king it's his time I, I, you know I, you know also I don't I don't really care if people make fun of me because the whole point of the roast is that everybody is material right yeah and, and it, it, as much as it was about Somizi it was about everyone else as well but what 
annoyed me was we only started recording at like half past 10 that night. Oh, and wow. by then, by then I had no energy left. I was yeah. furious. I was irritable. I was grumpy. So I had to put on a brave face and go and deliver because now, you know, in for a penny in for the pound. So you right, just have to right. go and get it done. But I actually hated doing it at the end because I was just annoyed that hours and hours of sitting in a dressing room had gone by before anyone could get their act together and start filming the stupid thing. Yeah, so by the, end, by the end, it wasn't fun. And I don't know how you do this. Do you prefer theater or do you prefer TV? Oh, I mean, I mean, film. The, you know, that, uh, that question is very important because um, when I came into the industry, I came through theater and obviously that's, that's where I saw myself. You know, theater was my thing. I just wanted to do theater. And truth be told, theater is amazing. Um, uh, you know, there's an adrenaline there, but there's no money in theater. So mm. um, as you can see now, 2020 has happened and, and some of the theaters that we, we, we were performing in are beginning to close doors. Um, so the migration to television was actually because of Suburban Bliss. I think when I, when I did Suburban Bliss, I kind of felt like, okay, I can have a life here. Um, whereas with theater, the idea was to have a life, but to also sell potatoes on the side, you know? <laughs> um, some, some very interesting comments coming through. Tracy says, I just did some wiki reading on Desmond. What a story and still so humble and amazing. Um, humility, you have to have humility as an actor because actors who are arrogant, they don't get the work. People just don't want to work with them. You oh, you'll be surprised. Oh, really? No, you'd be surprised. The arrogant ones are the ones who get, because they bring stardom to, to the project, whatever that means. You know what I mean? Like some producers feel like, we, you know, um, we got to walk on our toes. All, all of us have got to walk on our toes to, to make way for the, for the star, you know, and that's how we're going to sell the project. It's, you know. I, I don't, I don't want to turn this interview into like an ass kissing seminar because I, you know, I respect all the work that you've done and the incredible stuff that you've achieved in, in your career, but there can't be a lot of actors on your level in South Africa. There can't be a lot of people who walk into a room, have instant recognition where if you want a role, most of them are going to know if you come in, ah, shit, there goes the role because Desmond's here. He's going to take it. He can choose first. That happens though. I think sometimes it happens, yeah. I mean, it happens to me. There, there are actors, um, uh, there are specific roles that I'm, I'm called for, for a you? meeting I mean, or something. Who's, uh, who's higher up on the totem pole than you? There can't be many in this country. No, there's a, there's a lot of beautiful actors in our country, man. Um, one of them has, has just gone to EFF. Um, you know, Fana oh. and I is an amazing actor. You know? Oh, he became a politician, huh? He has become a politician. Fana, Fana is one of those actors. I've been on stage with Fana. Mm. I swear on my living mom that there were moments that I would watch this guy and actually forget that I'm, I'm supposed to speak next. Yo. You know, <laughs> he's, he's, okay. he's, one of, he's one of probably just an underrated actor in South Africa, but an amazing no, I mean actor. I'm guessing he's going to do very well in politics then, because, uh, you know, if you can pull that off, <laughs> people like that from a politician. That'll be good. And there's very little, you know, acting in polit politics. Is, it's very uh, similar streams. Same WhatsApp. No, it's, it's, I mean, I mean, politics are, is, is acting, you know, sometimes bad acting, but it's acting. I'll never forget you doing a version of Nkwasasana uh, Tlamini Zuma. In a, in a, you remember that? It's hilarious. Yeah. It's, with the cigarettes that was years ago all right so tell yeah. us about this pantomime because pantomimes are ridiculous um, my aunt who's now dead used to take us to pantomimes when we were children because i suppose she liked them more than we did but i always thought it was funny it's always funny because you know you got like desmond dubé in a dress and he's putting on a funny voice and it's like it's kind of what the trans community are hoping for except with more applause um, sure. And, and I, I've always found, <laughs> I've always found pantomimes kind of it's just good Christmas fun. It's like what people do in the festive season to go and like let loose and have a laugh. And Janice Honeyman is a genius at what she does. Oh, uh, she's Tell me really about it. she can put together an incredible cast and crew. Did you even have 
like to be persuaded or was it something that you thought, I don't want to do this in the beginning, but now you're loving it. What's, how did it all happen? Yeah, it sort of, sort of creeps up on you. It's, it's actually a good, that's a good comment. <laughs> you know, it sort of creeps up on you because Bernard, who is Bernard J, who is the yes. producer, um, sort of knows how I met Bernard a couple of years ago. I was doing a Shakespeare, my first Shakespeare as a guy who just came from the township. Now you can imagine, you know, mm. you come from the township and now you have to, to use thou thee, you know. <laughs> um, and, and Bernard just thought, hey man, when, when this ends, you know, we're about to go into some Christmas fun, you know, it's, it's, it's a light project. You, you need something light. Um, how about it, you know? And, and obviously what Bernard does is that he'll get you into like sort of smaller roles um, where you feel like, hey, 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 this is so cool. You know, this is, uh, hey, you know, but it's still nine shows a week. Anyway, so that's how I got in, um, into the pantomime. And, uh, and, and I started understanding the style because it's a very specific style, G. You know, it's a, um, um, right there is where I can tell you that there's a lot of actors, even the brilliant ones, who might not be able to do that kind of thing. And I've seen well, actors die. I've watched some pantomimes and I see, I, I watch this actor and I go, this guy is not well, enjoying this thing at all. I'm, I'm know how curious, to like, wh where is that line? Because you are, I mean, you're such an expressive person. You don't take yourself seriously when you're doing this kind of thing. So it's not like doing a movie where you have to be the character, you have to be honest, you have to, like with a pantomime, the audience are kind of in on the joke that it's all a big show and you, you have to make them laugh and humor is the important part of this. Is there ever a point where you feel like that's more fun than real acting or where it's a bit of a betrayal of your acting roots? Because you are, you're a serious actor. I mean, you're not, yeah. you're not, you're not some I, tissue. I see it as, as I, is it an escape? Yeah. Look, I think it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a juggling act because with pantomimes, you, you've got to play the character. Um, for example, the Ugly Sisters this year, um, <laughs> we, we, we found that... Who's the, other, who's the other Ugly Sister, by the it, way? It's Ben Foss. He's really ugly. Um, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He's a lovely, handsome, tall-looking guy. <laughs> um, so so ben, ben Foss and I is are the, you know, the tall sister and the, and the short sister. Man, it's, it's just wrong. It's it's just wrong. It's wrong at all levels. Like when Ben and I are standing together, you already you already starting to crack up before we even put the dresses on. You know, I'm just picturing it and I'm starting to laugh. Jesus, you know, it's gonna be uh, absolutely. Hate, and we've got I an amazing hate, cast as well this year. I can't stand pantomimes, but I would come and see you doing this. That that would be do. the reason. Please do, man. Please do. Just to see you, even when you now you you know you like you open your eyes up like that, and you I can just see you doing stupid stuff. On, I'm just gonna love it. So there we go. You know, this year, um, G. This year we we also because of COVID and so on, um, we decided to actually go more South African with the pantomime, which is what our audiences haven't seen uh, because because normally what what happens is that if if the UK had done um cinderella the following year we will do cinderella because then we rent their you know their sets and we we rent we mm. we, we get their wardrobe as well and so on so because of COVID, um the uk didn't have a pantomime last year neither did we so this year we're, we're sort of going uh, sort of deep rooted south, south african style in terms of this pantomime um it, it's it's our own clits you know that's uh, great if, if you may that's and, great yeah um, so I've got some comments for you here, some compliments. Racer Beck says, you haven't aged a bit, Desmond. Oh, these people are very kind, man. Very I've kind. aged down here. Down, <laughs> down, <laughs> down here. I'm sucking up like crazy at the moment. Uh, Michael says, true what Desmond says, life is a pantomime, and we can just see that even the good actors can fail at it. Uh, Ruth says she's booking tickets next week. It's going to be lots oh, of fun. Oh, man. So are you are you allowed to have full uh, capacity in the in the theatres? No, no, no. We we still follow um, COVID rules, and maybe that is an important comment because um, I think friends of mine were telling me that they were looking for tickets for November already. They couldn't get so so mm -hmm. you know because of COVID regulations, people need to get their tickets quite early this year. Right. Um, but I feel I feel so happy, man, to just know that families 
will gather again. You know what I mean? Like outside mm-hmm. their back good. gardens and, um, and little balconies, they can mm-hmm. now go to the theater with their kids and laugh and sing, sing along with one another. Well, here's mm-hmm. some feedback you might not have got before from Balesa. Balesa says, I'm grateful for the clientele ads. Uh, they helped me explain my actuarial science studies to my grandparents. See? Right. <laughs> Changing lives, Desmond. Right. Changing- that's very, very right. good. That's something I never thought of. Uh, Vinesh says, Desmond, you were chilling in Reka. Oh. Uh, See, lots of yeah, people just... Yeah, yeah. Reka was Kobe. a very special project for me as well. You know, um, How to Ruin Christmas. Uh, soon after that, you know, the roles were just so different. Um, yeah. You know, from How to Ruin Christmas to Reka. Um, and, and obviously... Uh, 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 the, the character in Reika that I played was Umfundisi, but Umfundisi who has deep issues, wants to be a politician, uh, lets certain things slide, um, you know, does not really follow the conventional biblical teachings, you know. That should have been Fana Makwena's role. <laughs> probably, probably. <laughs> and you know, you're quite right, Joe, and I'm glad that Fana Makwena went to politics. <laughs> Well, somebody said to me he's coming back into acting. Um, one he, of the I comments, think he has now. I, um, um, I, I sort of, you know, was uh, scrolling through the channels and I saw him. I think mm-hmm. it was on Scandal or Rhythm City, one of okay. those two, one of those shows. What's the worst work you've ever done? The thing that you don't ever want to do again, that you hate doing? That's hard work that wasn't fulfilling, that didn't pay well enough. There's, there's quite a couple. Um, uh, I think it depends. <laughs> there's quite a couple. It also depends on the project. You know, um, you, you find producers who are amazing in convincing you that this is the one, you know, this is, you know, it's going to be amazing. And then you get into the project and you look at the script and you go, um, in fact, and I'm, and I'm not going to tell you which one because you mm-hmm. know it, but I walked away from a project last year during COVID, when people were all looking for work, I went to, you know, I, I got this role and I and I just thought, you know, it was just not, not working. Not really? Yeah. She, was, and, and, and to say no to something at that time in particular. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. pretty amazing. And I, and I remember my wife's voice, you know, she, because I already had concerns when I read the script. And when I called her and I was on set and I said, I just can't. And she said, I understand fully, you know, wow. even now when we, you know, when we need money, my wife said, I understand fully, you know, come on. I mean, any other wife would have said, you get to work, you bring yeah. home that. <laughs> yeah. Son of a yeah. bitch. But your wife yeah. must be made of, made of strong stuff. That's an incredible supportive uh, thing that she did there. Absolutely. She is, man. She is. Thank you. Wow. All right, I'm going to bring on another fan of yours. This is George Meany. He uh, joins us every week. He's the CEO of Auto Trader. He, he remembers your Ama Glug Glug ad because it's the whole reason he went into motoring. Isn't that true, George? Exactly, Desmond. How's it, Gareth and 3 and How are you, man? Uh, yeah, yeah, good and you. I remember Dude, that. Dude, you ad. must be very old to, to remember the Ama Glug Glug ad. <laughs> At least he gets my age right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, De- Desmond, it's so good to see you, man. Thank you so much for being on the show this morning and uh, all the best to you. By the way, tickets for Cinderella, the pantomime in Johannesburg, now on sale, 240 Rand uh, through up. Uh, you can go to visit um, joburgtheater.com. That's joburgtheater.com. Group, family, and senior citizen discounts are available. So take granny, take the children. Uh, yeah, and your- come and see a spectacular. You know, um, the show is yeah. opening. Uh, for previews on the 3rd of November and we're going until the 24th this year. We're going until the 24th of December and not until the end of December. And if you needed any persuasion, I'm going to show you a picture of Fanny Flatulina. Yes, she is. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And that's, that's when she's, she thinks she's looking good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there we are. That's Desmond Dubé. What a pleasure to have you on again, sir. And go and watch thank you his, very much, uh, man. his latest. Thank you very much, guys. Pantomime, go and have some fun. Desmond Dubé, thank you very much.